So welcome. So we're from Hagado.com and we are the team uh, that has also started High Holidays at Home, which is a new website for uh, engaging with the High Holidays in this very unusual season. And obviously today we're going to talk about alternative Tashlik rituals. And so for, if you're not familiar, Hagadot.com is a website that invites Jew, every Jew, regardless of their background, to find a place for themselves in the Passover story so that they may create more meaningful, more personal, and more connective seders. And we do that by offering um, crowdsourced access to the Passover Haggadah so that anybody can mix and match content and make their own. And you can view it on screen. Um, you can print it, but you can also view it on screen in this interactive version. And um, that came really in handy this year over uh, Passover, because as you know, we were just beginning our lockdown. Um, but you can also use that same format to make a Rosh Hashanah Seder, um, a Yom Kippur ritual guide, or a blessing book, or your own Tashlik ceremony, um, and share it uh, interactively with your uh, friends and family. And both High Holidays at Home and Hagadot.com are uh, projects of Custom and Craft Jewish Rituals, Inc. We're a design lab for the Jewish community, experimenting with technology, media, and video to imagine new formats for engaging in ancient traditions. And we are a 501c3, and we believe that all of our content should be available for free, but we're only able to do that um, by the support of your donations. So if this webinar is meaningful for you, or if the content on our site is meaningful for you, and you're able to, um, we would really appreciate your support. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about Tashlik and a project that I have developed for Tashlik called the Apologies Exchange. I'm gonna give you tools for creating your own uh, Apologies Exchange or, or Tashlik in general for your uh, family and community. We're gonna spend some time brainstorming and answering questions and then we're gonna have a closing practice um, for Tashlik right here uh, on Zoom. So if you're not familiar with Tashlik, it means casting off or cat to cast away. And in this ceremony, you are casting away the previous year's mistakes and misdeeds um, symbolically by tossing breadcrumbs or pebbles into a large natural body of flowing water, such as a river, a lake, a sea, or an ocean. And when we do this, we name each chet um, or missed mark, and you might recognize that from the al chet. Um, we name each het aloud in either a whisper um, or if you're not comfortable, just, just think it in your head to yourselves, in your heart. Um, and so uh, in my experience, I've only done it with uh, bread, but as I've been reading more about it, I've uh, found that it's really encouraged for you to try doing it with a pebble or a leaf or some other natural part of nature because um, that bread is actually like junk food to the fish and it's not good for them. So a more eco-friendly version um, would be to take something that's already naturally in the environment. So I used to live in Los Angeles and um, I loved going to the beach and doing Tashlik. And here's a beautiful photo of just the community being able to go to the beach. And um, I think this year it's, uh, it's going to be really powerful because that might be the only way that we can gather in person by going outside and being able to be socially distant. Um, but one of the great things about Los Angeles is also the creativity. So uh, you might not know that uh, Los Angeles actually does have a river going around it where water from the mountains flows out. And um, a really innovative group called Eastside Jews um, started a practice called Down to the River. And uh, they would do their Tashlik in the evening and uh, go down uh, to the LA River, which is obviously not very, uh, not, not ter it's fairly shallow. Um, and cast do their Tashlik um, in this longer evening ceremony. And in this photo, you can see they've got, um, the, those lights are actually headphones. I think they were listening to like an audio meditation or like silent disco. So I love Tashlik uh, because it's an embodied Jewish experience. We don't have a lot of Jewish rituals where we get to come at it with our whole selves, uh, be moving and be in nature. And it's a physical manifestation really of what we are trying to achieve. Um, it's very personal. You uh, don't have to answer to anybody. If you want to keep it entirely to yourself, that's what you can do. You don't have to read specific words that are in a book for you or a liturgy. You, you just speak from the heart. Um, it's also agnostic friendly. Um, 
for if you're uh, not sure what you believe in God or, or not sure what this type of God is, or even if you don't believe in God, there's really value in looking back on the past year and physically um, trying to cast off um, your regrets. Um, if you're a procrastinator, it's great because while many communities do it on the afternoon of Rosh Hashanah or the day after, uh, technically you can do it um, all the way through Sukkot. So um, I have a friend who's a very successful artist and she loves to set deadlines so that she can feel stressed out and miss them because that's when she finally does the work. So it's like Rosh Hashanah might be your deadline, uh, but go ahead and miss it. And if you do it by Sukkot, you're fine. Um, I love improvising. I love all the ways that we can add to this ceremony. Um, and finally, I make lots of mistakes and uh, it gives me comfort to know that I can make mistakes uh, apologize. Obviously, I want to apologize to the people that I have hurt as well. Um, but this is a tool where I can start to feel like I can cope and do better. So I was actually asked by Eastside Jews and Reboot to uh, think about an alternative Tashlik ritual. And that's how I came up with the Apologies Exchange. Um, I thought a lot about the ways that we do Tashlik. And even though I love that you can keep it uh, personal, um, I felt that I we're doing ourselves a little bit of a disservice because we don't know what everybody else is thinking and apologizing for. And often we beat ourselves up for things that are so common. And uh, it, it, wouldn't it be great if we could find a little bit more connection in this process? So I created this apologies booth and uh, set it up both at this down to the river experience. And I actually even brought it to many secular experiences around LA and um, before he was mayor, uh, Garcetti actually came by and uh, came into one too. Um, so it's called the Apologies Exchange. And you go into this booth one by one. Um, it's actually set up from really easy materials and I'll show you the link where you can even download instructions to setting it up yourselves. It's pegboard from Home Depot and um, brackets that can be uh, screwed in by hand and a curtain. And when you get inside, you see a list, uh, a wall of apologies that have been anonymously posted by people who came before you. Um, there's no names attached. Um, at the bottom of each, it says, please accept my apology. And you go into that room and you can have your own moment on your own time uh, watching, uh, looking at these. And you're reading these notes. Um, I'm sorry I acted viciously at work and created a situation where you were hurt and uncomfortable. Please accept my apology. I'm sorry for not being more free with love and affection with family and friends and my fellow humans. Please accept my apology. To my children, I apologize for participating in making your home, our home, a toxic environment at times and not being proactive in making change. Please accept my apology. I'm sorry for being impatient selfish, unaware, hurtful. Please ex accept my apology. I'm sorry for not seeing how beautiful my life is. I'm sorry for making other people my higher power. I'm sorry for, I, I objectified you. I'm sorry I hurt you. Please accept my apology. I wish I'd included you more often. I hope you know how much I love you and how much you are missed. Please accept my apology. I apologize to my husband for underappreciating all the wonderful ways he loves me and our son. Please accept my apology. So when you're in this booth and, and you've read these apologies, uh, the, you're instructed to find one that really speaks to you. Take that down off the wall and leave the booth with it. Meanwhile, you can write your own apology and put it in the empty spot. So that's now on the wall in this place. When you leave, you take this apology, which is written on water soluble paper, and there's a bowl of water that you can drop it in. Once you drop it in, you start to see uh, the apologies dissolve. So this has become a really powerful way for communities to collectively do a different type of Tashli and to learn from each other. Um, in previous years, uh, I've sold this, uh, the instructions as a kit for communities to be able to um, create it on their own. 
this year I'm just offering it for free. I, I just want people to be able to connect. Um, so you can download the instructions packet uh, on our site, High Holidays at Home. Um, but also, uh, you might have figured out already, you really don't need to do the whole booth uh, to do this experience. You can uh, just get the water soluble paper and as a family or with friends, um, each write your own, maybe put them in a pile and exchange them and then uh, read what somebody has given you and, and just put it in the water and, and watch it dissolve. And it's a slow dissolve. So you'll, you'll uh, spend some time with it, um, with these words dissolving. Um, you should also know that it's rice paper, so it's not toxic. Um, you might want to use uh, water soluble uh, uh, pens. Uh, those will probably dissolve more quickly, but something that's, uh, if you use non-toxic pens, I think you should be fine uh, emptying this in a drain or, I don't know, flushing it down the toilet. Um, but what's really interesting is it also makes this kind of sludge that you can then dry out again and turn into rice paper. It's kind of like, um, you know, it, it's just like this, this uh, fibers that you can just kind of press or you can make an object out of it. So I'm very curious if anybody ends up um, repurposing that sludge. Um, so that's one idea for Tosh Leak, but I'm really not, uh, the point of this webinar is to share different ideas and, and to have some time to think together about what will work for you. Um, Rabbi Stephanie Collin from Union Temple in New York uh, had some great ideas. Um, about uh, having a bowl of warm water in front of you and to speak your deeds into ice cubes and place them into water and watch them dissolve. And um, I will say, Rebecca and I like to joke that we can sometimes get a little woo-woo. And I had once participated in a ritual where we uh, whispered our, our, it was a Rosh Chodesh ritual and we whispered to water and we would watch the, the ripples and, um, and we were felt like we were changing the state of the water. So I would say that even talking to water on its own uh, can feel surprisingly powerful. Um, but I think ice cubes is another great like uh, thing to watch dissolve. Um, another idea from Stephanie, Rabbi Stephanie is that you can also write your deeds on paper that doesn't have to be water soluble, but you can burn them. Uh, definitely think about safety, especially if you are on the West Coast um, actually, at this point, fire might be a little bit traumatic. So I'm thinking of my West Coast friends, and maybe that's not right for you. But East Coast friends, maybe burn something in a very safe metal container. Um, 18 Doors, uh, a great formerly interfaith family, um, also has some great ideas, as well as PJ Library. Um, 18 Doors has a post about um, sidewalk chalk. You can use sidewalk chalk outdoors and then take a spray bottle and um, use that to have the words uh, erase, uh, you know, dissolve. Um, you can also just think about the water washable marker on uh, paper. Um, I love this idea of writing on a rock because I just love like creating these objects and you know, if it's washable ink, uh, you're not really doing damage to the, to the rock itself. It can go back into nature. Um, and for kids, uh, a small chalkboard or a dry erase board could also have the same effect and you really don't need to do any other cleanup. Um, or you can try this Mentimeter poll. If you are doing a virtual gathering, um, you were able to see how we can, you can pretty easily have a question and have people answer it. And I imagine if you were to do this, um, you know, during a, your Tasha experience, you might want to have it on screen more. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna revisit that poll at the end. So on our site, we have some other great ideas. So um, we have an audio guided Tosh Leak that's about 10 minutes with Deanna Neal. Um, you can put that, uh, listen to that on your um, iPod and even go for a walk. Um, there's a great art project called Tosh Leak Atlas. This is sponsored by Asylum Arts. Um, I also want to let you know that we're going to share this presentation with you afterwards and the recording will be online because I, I can see a few of you uh, taking notes and I don't stress about it. You'll get all this. So uh, Tosh League Atlas uh, is a really interesting project where you can search for a body of water near you or anywhere um, around. Uh, I live, used to live in Germany, so I was searching for the Rhine River and you can you can add your own apology or regret anonymously to the site. And then when somebody goes to that, goes to the website and searches for that same body of water, 
they'll see your apologies too. So I thought that's a really interesting way of like connecting virtually. Um, mental health Tosh Leak, uh, that's from the Blue Dove Foundation. We have a lot of great content from them on our site. And I love this because like, this is just really practical. Like this stuff works. Uh, there's been studies how even washing your hands or submerging yourself in water does have a physical effect on the body for relaxation. And this, this process of taking your regrets, physically uh, manifesting them in some sort of object and being able to get rid of them, that also actually has a, it has a scientific way of calming the body. Uh, so Blue Dove Foundation has a great, great uh, content for that. Um, we have a lovely blessing for seeing the ocean, if you are able to get out to the ocean. And we actually have a full Tosh Leak ceremony um, that you can download. And um, you can mix and match and, or create your own ceremony on our site by um, putting together a series of readings or artwork. So I recommend that you build out this whole ritual, okay? So this practice of um, performing a traditional Tosh Leak or, what, or doing the Apologies booth, um, it's great to think about your ritual uh, having a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, that that's, gives you this uh, opportunity to welcome guests and transition into the space. And, um, you know, think about how people will be joining you. Do you play music? Do you have an icebreaker question? Um, for us, we had our poll up there. Um, it's great to think about uh, the, that welcome as an invitation and an opportunity to start seeing uh, the people around us. Um, think about an opening ritual, whether it's something to connect us to our senses, whether it's scent or breath or movement for grounding our bodies. Maybe you're lighting a candle, maybe you're saying a blessing. Um, I think the Shehekianu is always useful. Um, uh, we also have the Habdala blessing um, to separate the um, everyday and the holy, that, that could be a great one or just going across a mezuzah. Um, I would say then you do your, the, the physical Tosh Leak ritual, um, but also leave some room for sharing afterwards. Um, if it is something where people aren't sharing their apologies with each other, is there a way that we can still come together and feel like we are connecting and uh, making some meaning out of this experience or having a guided conversation? I also think that having a uh, hopefulness uh, is really important. So we're not just feeling bad about what happened and hoping we can for move on, but really um, letting ourselves uh, state some positive intentions of what we'd like to see happen and, and being grat grateful. I think you know this year has been so challenging for so many of us in ways we never would have expected. Um, but we can also be grateful for the things that did go right. And I'm sure for all of us, something went right uh, and recognize that. Um, this is a, think about poetry and music that you can use for this, this opportunity where uh, you're, you're coming together with others to create meeting, meaning. And then think about your closing. Uh, Rebecca and I, um, one of our, I'd say, commandments of gathering is that we try not to end on logistics um, I think we've all been to like a really great dinner party and you, you have this great conversation and then it's all about who can I give leftovers to, where are you parked, how am I getting here, and you sort of like that quickly, like back into like all of the logistics of your life. Um, obviously logistics are important. Um, I would say handle your logistics and then do your closing. So if you were at that dinner party, do the leftovers, the parking, and then do some nice blessing together. And in this case, um, if you have logistics after your Tosh League, get that in and then come back and do some closing ritual, um, even if it's just taking a breath together. Um, I also think that like in uh, replacement for uh, the shofar, uh, I love using kazoos or just making some noise. So think about closing rituals that have worked for you in the past and uh, feel free to repurpose them for your own Tosh League. Um, we are going to have some time for brainstorming after this, and then we're going to have our closing ritual. Um, I want to get a few logistics 
out right now, so we don't have to come back to it. Um, so for those of you who are interested in our work, uh, we have a ton of really great content that we've created this season. Um, I say that uh, not just as a person who's created content, but who has uh, been observing all the content that's been coming on the site. Uh, we have a, a, a webinar on our blog that you can watch for how to, wa how to host a Rosh Hashanah Seder. Um, and it goes into more detail about using the tools on our website. Um, Rebecca has written some great um, instructions for making a home altar, and we have both uh, clips on that and a webinar on that. Uh, we had Alden Solovey do a authentic confessions writing workshop. Um, great for writing your own, um, you're writing your own Tashlik actually. Um, Trisha Arlen is going to be joining us next week for a setting your Rosh Hashanah intentions writing workshop. Uh, Esther Kostanowicz is going to be writing about uh, remembrance, uh, speaking about remembrance and Yiskor, uh, making meaning in their memory. And then we have Casper Turkayel, who um, is really a brilliant um, uh, uh, theologian. Uh, from, he's from Harvard Divinity School. He is the author of uh, The Power of Ritual. And he's going to be working with us, us on creating your ritual life planner. So you can see Sign up for all of our webinars here. And you can also find resources for your Rosh Hashanah Seder, Tashlik Blessing Book, interactive and print options at highholidaysathome.com. We do have a Facebook group, uh, Hagadot.com Seder Planners, where the conversation is continuing for High Holidays. Um, we love Priya Parker's writing, The Art of Gathering, always helpful for planning any gathering, any time of year. Um, Simon Sinek will, is his Start With Why TED Talk is great for thinking about the purpose of your gathering. Even if you think you know the purpose, it's always really helpful to like go back to why you're doing this particular Tashlik. And if you're working online, um, eJewish Philanthropy has some resources for your online gathering. So with that, we're going to take a, a break from sharing and I want us to just take some time for questions and, um, and brainstorming together. I'm curious how you're planning to do your Tosh leak this year and um, how we can help you uh, troubleshoot some problems that you, see, you potentially see um, in planning it. And just, I'm gonna scan through some questions here. Uh, there was a question, this is all on the website. And um, there was another question, when do we need to do it? Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can do it. I, I think technic, the, uh, we'll say those who are the most observant might say that it has to be done on the afternoon of uh, Rosh Hashanah or the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Um, but really, it's very common practice to do it any time before Sukkot. And I think even doing it in Elul or um, uh, before Rosh Hashanah is just fine. I think um, doing it uh, whenever works for you is really the point here. Um, suggestions for a drive-through Tashlik, that Ooh. is very, very interesting. I, um, it immediately makes me think of, I grew up visiting my family here in New Jersey, uh, where I now live. And it makes me think of the old toll collectors where my uncles, it was like a contest to see how much you could not slow down to throw coins through the toll collectors uh, little slots there. I could see that being an interesting way of doing it, of having um, like a big, like a kiddie pool. A kid, I would say kiddie pool. Yes, the drive through convenience stores along that. So I would say kiddie pool on either side of the car and having like a line of the cars driving through sort of like a soul train line of kiddie pools and bringing in a lot of references here and then inviting people come with like leaves come with pebbles come with something that isn't going to make a big mess that could just be you know poured back out into a parking lot or something and having people throw them out their windows i could see you know with with like a, a gentle a gentle toss maybe not an overhand throw as a as a um that was just the first thought that popped in my head yeah, no, that, I mean, I definitely think thinking about, um, yeah, the kiddie pool, um, you might have, you might assign someone to be handing out uh, the uh, materials at, you know, the, the first state, the first drive through, and then at the end, they can drop it into that pool. Um, that's, I would love to see 
photos or uh, or hear how this went. So please, uh, Rabbi Tevra, share it with us afterwards. Um, I also just want to uh, call out a couple great suggestions. Um, earlier, when we talked about using um, pebbles or pine leaves or pine needles or leaves, we also had the suggestion to use uh, carp food. So um, that feels very, uh, you know, hopeful and generative uh, to be able to feed the the fish um, or bird feed. So um, so those are great suggestions. Um, yeah, and, so, and uh, Rebecca also notes, it's great if you want to connect with people who are um, observing Shabbat or observing the holiday and won't go, you know, they don't necessarily uh, drive or leave the house or do technology on those days, but you can still plan this on another day um, to do something together. Um, there's a question about, I, I think, just about like how to hold space for both kids and parents in the Tasha thing. I think and again, this is maybe just revealing about me. I was a very anxious kid at times. And I think, you know, I think it's easy as a kid to beat yourself up sometimes because they talk about sins and it sounds so huge. So I think to me, holding space for kids uh, in, in this idea of like a communal but still private confession, I think just modeling for them that it's okay to mess up. I think that to me would be the biggest thing that I, if I were a kid doing that, especially with my parents uh, and just to make space for them to be vulnerable. And that's probably got to be modeled by the adults first. And maybe it's, you know, it's the idea of the things, those mistakes that you make between people and the mistakes that you make between you and whatever sort of higher calling you want to think about. Uh, and I think that that's a good way to distinguish it. And I think that is certainly, then for an interfaith doesn't have to be specifically Jewish. You know, I think that we all mess up regardless of our, of our faith. Mm -hmm. Right, like I don't, I, I don't like the word sins. First of all, uh, it sounds too like, uh, uh, we'll say, it, it, sounds, it sounds like too much of another religion to me, um, but more so than that, it just sounds too judgy. Right, like for me, the reason I love the high holidays is because it's really about doing right by other people. And um, sins implies being judged by an authority figure. Um, but really, I care most about the people, you know, having hurt or done right by the people I love. Um, Alison Lecter, who is a Jewish meditation teacher, um, she uh, talks about times that we were unskilled if we were unskilled in our interactions. And um, I am very unskilled <laughs> many times. But then if I say it's just unskilled, I also think about I am getting more skilled as life goes on and as I get better. And by being able to acknowledge the times that I was unskilled, I'm actually already more skilled. So, um, and I agree with Rebecca. I think that showing kids that um, adults can acknowledge mistakes too um, is really helpful and I think would build a lot of trust in, um, you know, our own authority as leaders. Um, any other questions or just ideas about um, how you plan to do Tashi? I will say that for me, uh, Tashlik is the most important uh, part of the high holiday season. Um, I love going, the part I love about going to synagogue is quite honestly, seeing all the people that I don't see all year. Like that, that's like, you know, when we finally have a thousand people uh, in the room, that's really exciting to me. Uh, but to be honest, uh, the part of that is, I think the real transformation of the holiday is that Tashlik ritual and being able to uh, look back and uh, figure out how to, um, internally make amends while I'm also making amends with those that I love. So um, this is actually, we're gonna um, move into our final closing practice. Uh, if nobody has any other uh, questions or, um, or comments at this time. So, so last call um, for questions or ideas. Okay, uh, Robin writes, my family has a ritual where we write down our hopes and our dreams for the coming year. I love that. 
and, um, and keeping them posted for a month or so on the wall. I love that as a contrast to the things that you have written down and are um, you know, being cast away, you also have an intentional space where your hopes are posted and, and held on to. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, any others? I just, uh, somebody said that they uh, used Tashley as a moment to set an intention in a, in a specific area of our lives as a family and that uh, someone is not, they're recording them, which I think is such a cool time capsule way of, of, of um, capturing it and then coming, being able to come back to it mm -hmm. at the end, maybe like in Elul next year or something uh, so that they can know uh, in the next year. Right, there's a great project um, called 10Q where you can, um, it'll ask you 10 questions, you can uh, respond to them and then it kind of keeps it in this like digital time capsule. You'll get to answer those questions again the next year and see what you wrote in previous years. Um, so I, th I think we have re uh, links to 10Q also on our, our website. I'll put, I'll put that in the chat and then I think Kashira popped on and I know if Kashira's popping on, it means she wants to say something. Yeah. Because we get to see, oh no, okay, we just get to see her beautiful face. I'll take it, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I just want to say hi and thanks. I was <laughs> eating at the same time and didn't want to subject everybody. So, <laughs> Hello, Kashira. Hi. Uh, and to give Kashira a shout out, Kashira is part of um, the Kohenet uh, training program, the Hebrew priestesses, and they have been so generous sharing a lot of amazing content with us on our website. And um, it's just really fun and embodied and uh, feminist and expansive. And so I highly recommend um, checking out uh, their content on our site. And, um, and so we will, um, we're, as I said, we're, I'm going to bring us into a closing ritual. Now, we are going to share this video, the presentation and ideas from the chat on our blog, and you'll receive an email link to that. And uh, we'll spend the next five minutes uh, closing out with our own uh, Tosh leak. So I ask you to close your eyes and uh, take a deep breath. Remember that you're, you're a body sitting in space and you're not just a head on a screen looking at a square. And notice where your body feels tight uh, where you can take a breath and release it a little bit. That's the, that's the first place where we're going to be letting go is letting go in our body. So just, just sit and, and, and notice where you're unnecessarily holding on or, or being tight. Soften your neck, soften your shoulders, soften your hands. And I'm going to read this poem by Mary Oliver called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscape over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Open your eyes and, and settle on the screen. I'm sorry for being too hard on myself and others. I'm sorry for perpetuating white supremacy and Ashka normativity. I'm sorry for not appreciating my family enough. I'm sorry for letting my, impatient hurt, my impatience hurt those I love. I'm sorry that I talk about my kids to my friends, even though they ask me not to. I'm sorry that I've really been impatient and said things I should have said, thought 
carefully about first. I've been overly tough on my kids and should love them for who they are instead of harping about grades. I should be less harsh on myself as well. I'm sorry for dismissing others' fears. I'm sorry for letting my impatience hurt those I love. I'm sorry for being ruled by fear and anxiety and failing to appreciate all the goodness in my life. For all of these, we forgive you. And we'll read by Rachel, Rabbi Rachel Barenblatt. Here I am again, ready to let go of my mistakes. Help me to release myself from all the ways I've missed the mark. Help me to stop carrying the karmic baggage of my poor choices as I cast this bread upon the waters, lift my troubles off my shoulders. Help me to know that this year is over, washed away like crumbs in the current. Open my heart to blessing and gratitude. Renew my soul as the dew renews the glass, grasses. And we say together, Amen.